Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, uh, last week we discussed about reading, right? Uh, remember what reading is? Can someone tell me about reading? Last week we discussed about reading and the definition of the reading word. I think I have to open one. <laughs> okay, uh, Zahira, please. The process of extracting information. Okay. The process of extracting information from from writings. Writings, okay, that's great. Okay, I agree with Zaira. Uh, one more from Safa. Please speak up, Safa. You still muted, Safa. For me, reading is understanding some letters or symbols or get some information. Okay. Okay. I also agree with you, Safa. Okay. And last week, we also uh, learned about two strategies, scanning and skimming, right? Scanning and skimming. Scanning is used when we need to find a specific information from a, a text or an article, right? Meanwhile, skimming uh, works well when we want to get an overview from an article, right? Okay, remember that? And I hope you have practiced in your daily life to do that okay um okay uh, that's skimming and scanning so uh, leave it behind and then we move into the next chapter that is writing uh, today we will talk about writing but before uh, we move forward i have um <laughs> Philosophical question again, yeah. Always, yeah. What is the definition of write or writing? Maybe for yeah, write, write something. What is write? What kind of activity the write or writing is? Can someone respond my question? This Tizania Putri. Okay, go ahead, Tizania. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, I think uh, writing or write is the action uh, to communi communicate uh, some some meaning from a writer to reader. Okay, that's great. Yeah, to communicate uh, from a writer to reader. Okay, good. Okay. Ah, Mentimeter. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, so I have Mentimeter here. Yeah. Uh, what did the last time you write? But don't write many matter, okay? That's uh, the deal. Uh, wait a second. I will share the link in the chat room. Okay. There we go. You can click the link in the chat uh, room or chat box.
53 okay okay i think enough most of you wrote biology notes okay okay that's right it's fine i found something interesting there web novel uh web novel okay boom okay that's great Met task okay Simon okay okay thank you very much for your participation <laughs> so everyone I think everyone doing activity that we call it write or writing okay so we move into the next slide okay wait a minute I have trouble here Where is the slide? Okay. 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 The concept of writing. The aim or the purpose of writing is to communicate ideas to readers. That's everyone knows that or simply uh, transfer ideas from your brain from your brain to the others okay from brain to brain that's oh, writing uh, purpose because there is no direct wire or cable between our brain to others okay do you agree <laughs> or not agree there's no uh, physical wire or cable from your brain to the others therefore we need media uh, we need something to connect our brain to other brain okay we need something to connect uh, the writer's brain to the reader's brain yeah. okay in biology as you uh, learn about basic biology with who, who, who are the uh, lecturer basic biology Pak Anas Bu PN Bu Mulyati sir Oh Bu Mulyati ya yeah. oke okay. Bu P oke okay. Bu Mulyati always uh, talk about chemical communication from one animal to other animal yeah in biology there are many types of uh, biological communication right such as chemical communication uh, from animal to animal using pheromone if you ever heard that etc there's many many uh, types of biological communication okay one of them is verbal communication yeah either uh, written or spoken yeah. in our circumstances especially written verbal communication that we will discuss today yeah as we know that uh, written communication has been used since a couple of thousands of years ago yeah. if you know hieroglyph from egypt thousand years ago uh, the letters is very unique no one or only uh, few people or expert can read hieroglyph letter okay I mean that uh, written communication has been used for a long long time ago but communication problems still exist today so you can see the slide the problem yeah, still exists okay only one there but can you tell me uh, other problem that may occur in written communication 
other problem that may exist yeah, in the written communication. Can you, Tariq, please? Uh, a different language, I think. Different language. That's great. Yeah, I agree with you, Tariq. Yeah, different language. Uh, moreover, different type of uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, letters, yeah, or font, or what do you call it? Yeah? Symbols. Symbols. Yeah. Thank you very much. So then, if we are not mastering those kind of symbols, then we cannot yeah, access the information behind it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any others? Problem? Zahira, please. Uh, language norms. Language norms? Can yeah. you explain further? Um, what I mean is about the norms which some language are considered harmful and rude like that. Okay, that's great. And it will uh make the different perspective right from one maybe race or or in 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 java itself in, in java island there is a, a many there are many uh, tribes right but actually in java tribe itself there are many uh, dialect that may differ one's other okay and in central java and east java although it has same language same dialect no 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 it's not uh, same but similar uh, but the norm i agree with zahira maybe in uh, east java it's very useful but in central java it's ruthless okay and many uh, problem like uh, culture and uh, the reader and the, the writer itself, uh, because we we know talk about the writer. The writer cannot yeah, express their idea in proper way, so then uh, the reader uh, cannot receive a uh, correct idea from the writer itself. Okay. So then, in the slides, you can read that the writers and readers might draw different meanings from the text. Yeah. How about the solution? Yeah. The solution of this specific problem. Okay. You can read that. To organize words systematically and coherently to guide the reader's interpretation. We cannot uh, solve 100%, but we can uh, avoid uh, the misunderstanding by organized words systematically. Okay. Next slide. Okay. Roy Peter Clark, the big parts of a story should stick together but the small parts need some stickum as well when the big parts fit we call that good feeling coherence when sentences connect we call it cohesion okay so we have to underline words they are coherence and cohesion two terms that we will discuss today. Coherence, yeah, coherence. Okay, next slide. Okay. <laughs> coherence, yeah, coherence is a noun, yeah. It's condition. Coherence is a condition or yeah, you, you can call it condition, yeah? When all the sentences in the paragraph have logical or natural connection, yeah, 
and also uh, consistency with what with the main idea yeah because the paragraph yeah consists of several sentences yeah, and there is uh, main main sentences uh, main sentence and several supporting sentences okay okay they also have to be consistent okay, in the next thing, with the main idea as well as the other sentences okay so uh, every sentences every sentence in the paragraph need to be connected to the main idea and also the to the other sentences coherence paragraph will be much easier to read yeah. you can uh, read in the slide it refers to how easy it is to understand the writings yeah. i remember when i um, took my TOEFL ipt yeah my TOEFL IBT exam two years ago, there was a section, writing section, that I had to wrote uh, about the top in coherence way. <laughs> it's very difficult. Or explain a graph like that. Uh, and I do, I did it using computer because Tuval IPT used computer and I typed uh, in the answer box and you know uh, besides I have to wrote a coherence paragraph it's hard very hard I have to uh, pay attention on the words number because uh, there's a limitation a minimum words yeah around 200 and 300 words yeah that i must type yeah. otherwise my score will not be perfect yeah. so uh, you have to uh, exercise you have to train yourself to uh, write something yeah. not only write biological notes but others like you can I see in the Mentimeter, yeah, web novel or poem or others, maybe in Bahasa or in English, yeah. Okay, try to write something, yeah. Even if it's only a diary, a daily diary, it's, it's great, yeah. Okay. Okay, boom. Ah. Coherence is the product of two factors. Yeah. There are two factors that uh, may affect the coherence uh, quality of paragraph. The first is paragraph unity, and the second is sentence cohesion. Yeah. Next. Next. Okay, a good paragraph contains uh, first a topic sentence, yeah, and second is uh, or uh, supporting sentences. The topic sentence usually lies on the first part or first order or first sentence of a paragraph, usually, uh, but not always. Yeah, usually, but not always. Yeah. Furthermore, a paragraph commonly has only one topic sentence. Yeah. It must be a clear and straightforward to the idea. Yeah. Simple and straightforward. Yeah. That's because uh, many readers are too be uh, no no many readers too busy to read your whole paragraph. Yeah. Like we discussed last week. Uh, we have a strategy called skimming. Skimming is strategy, a rapid reading strategy that we have to read the first 
sentence in the paragraph. Uh, so, yeah, if we want to um, attract more uh, reader, yeah, we have to put the main idea in the first paragraph. Yeah, yeah, they maybe only have limited time to read our uh, article. So then, read the first uh, sentence. Maybe is the solution for them because uh, there's no time for them. Yeah. Or if we read a uh, scientific article, we usually uh, read the abstract only. Yeah, because we have no time to read all or rest of this article. It may be need a whole day to read uh, the article, the scientific article, full scientific article. Yeah. So the solution is to read the, abs the abstract, yeah, abstract of those article. And so for the paragraph, yeah, because the reader has only a limited time, so then they read the first sentence only. It's okay, yeah. Okay, uh, back to the slide. A topic sentence, single generaliz generalization that serves as the focus of attention. Yeah. Expression of the central idea, yeah, like we discussed before, yeah. The second, supporting sentences contain more specific information, yeah, more detail, yeah, than the topic sentence. Okay, maintain the same focus of attention as the topic sentence. Yeah. So the supporting sentences are explanation of the topic sentence. Okay. And there is a note in the last uh, line of this uh, slide. All sentences are linked. That's the focus, actually. Yeah. All the sentence in the paragraph, if we want to have coherence paragraph, yeah, you have to make sure that there is no strange or weird sentence in your paragraph. Make sure that there is no outlier in your paragraph, yeah. out of topic sentence in your paragraph. You can just erase yeah, or delete uh, that weird sentence, or just make those sentence into the next topic yeah, or the, or other paragraph. Actually, yeah. Okay. Okay, example. Okay, can you read clearly? Okay, it's talking about smoking. Okay. I think the paragraph has a uh, proper structure, I think. Okay, the first sentence is the main sentence. Smoking is harmful for four reasons. Yeah. It's simple and clear. And then the writer explain about the harmful 
of the smoking in the following sentences. Uh, you can read from the text. Firstly, secondly, firstly, expensive habit. Second, uh, bad for uh, respiratory system. And third, can cause lung cancer. And the fourth, smoking gives you bad breath. Yeah. And you can see there, there is no strange sentence, I think. So it's a great example for us. The next example for you. Seifa, would you mind to read for us? Because I see your lips is moving. Okay. <laughs> okay, please, Seifa, read for us. Okay, sir. My hometown is famous for several amazing natural features. First, it is noted that for the Wadden River, which is very wide and beautiful. On either side of this river, which is, which is 175 feet wide, are many willow trees which have long branches that can, bus, that can move gracefully in, in the wind. In autumn, the leaves of these trees fall and cover the river banks like golden snow. Also, on the other side of the town is Wadon Hill, which is unusual because it is very steep. Even though it is steep, climbing this hill is not dangerous because there are, there are some firm rocks along the sides that can be used as stairs. The third amazing feature of, is the big old tree. This tree stands 200 feet, feet tall and is probably about 600 years old. This tree, these tree landmarks are truly amazing and to make my hometown a famous place. That's all, sir. Thank you very much, Shefa. Shiva, what do you think about this paragraph? I think it has a good structure, sort of like the previous, like the previous, like the previous one. Okay. Can you find, or do you agree with the uh, highlight, the blue highlight that this uh, uh, main sentence? Yes, I do. Okay. So then the other uh, yellow highlight are supporting sentences, isn't it? Yes, is it? Okay. So how many uh, natural 
features that stated from the text. I think there are four, four features. Okay. Can you read the last sentence? These three landmarks. Oh, yes. Okay. So probably, yeah. Uh, the first sentence is, is a main sentence, right? Or main topics. But the last sentence, it's a conclusion. Okay. So um, if we just skimming this article, then we just can get the first sentence. But if we uh, extensively read this article, then we can get the totally understanding of this article. Yeah. So then we cannot. Uh, yeah. It's a uh, what we call it. Deep understanding. Okay. Okay, next sentence, yeah, next example. Okay, thank you, Sefa. You're welcome, sir. Oh, there's no example, okay. Okay, uh, the first is paragraph unity. The second is sentence cohesion. Yeah. Sentence cohesion. Cohesion uh, refers to the connectivity in a text, the link of one sentence to the next gives us our experience of flow. Yeah. So, uh, although a paragraph, uh, is a coherence, but, uh, maybe it's not easy to read because there is no flow. Uh, feeling maybe it's uh, harder to understand or it's not convenient to read or it's not joy to read yeah like we read novel if the novel has high quality then if we read a novel then we can read a long day yeah a whole day we can read Maybe one book, uh, only one one day or a couple of day. Yeah. So we, if we read a uh, not cohesive, yeah, or coherence, yeah, novel, then we cannot, uh, or we just feel that something wrong with this novel, like that. Okay, so cohesion is also uh, important yeah besides the paragraph unity okay many different techniques to to achieve the cohesion in the uh, paragraph yeah you can do repetition or synonymy or antonymy yeah, etc and also you can uh, put a uh, connection yeah, or we can call this transition yeah for example identity or opposition or addition or cause and effect etc yeah okay we have uh, another example my favorite color is blue i like it because it is calming and it's relax me I often go outside in the summer and lie on the grass and look into the clear sky when I'm stressed. For this reason, I have to say my favorite color is blue. Yeah. In my opinion, yeah, it is coherent and cohesive uh, paragraph. <clears throat> but uh, if we change uh, this uh, structure of the paragraph, then we can feel 
uh, either not coherent or not cohesive paragraph. My favorite color is blue. Blue sports cars go very fast. Driving in this way is dangerous and cause many car crashes. I had a car accident once and broke my leg. I was very sad because I had to miss a holiday in Europe because of the injury. Maybe it's quite cohesive, yeah, because uh, we can find a repetition like blue and blue, yeah, here, blue and blue, yeah, okay, car crashes, car accident, yeah, synonymy. But we also find a strange sentence, yeah. or it's not proper order of these sentences. So then it's cohesive paragraph, but not coherent. OK. Then the last uh, example. My favorite color is blue. I'm calm and relaxed. In the summer, I lie on the grass and look up. Yeah, it's current because uh, there's no strange sentence and well structured. But if we read this paragraph, we feel uh, what do we call it here yeah. stuck. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the 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 best term to to say this yeah yeah there is no flow in this paragraph yeah just like that okay we have read before yeah? common techniques to achieve cohesion uh, repetition synonymy antonymy yeah. Example, okay, example again. How might you fix the following sentences so that they are more coherent? Yeah. Or cohesive, yeah, cohesive, you can do that also. Three. Okay, we move fast. Okay, pay attention to the highlight. The highlight, black holes. Yeah, it's repetition. Okay, let's uh, make the paragraph cohesive, but not coherent. Why? Because the structure of this sentence. Yeah, it much. It's much better when we change the structure of the second uh, sentence. Yeah, you can see there. Okay. We look into the previous slide. Yeah. The collapse of a dead star into a point perhaps no larger than a marble creates a black hole. Then we can change into a black hole is created by a collapse. It's same, it's same sentence, but the structure was changed. Okay, so it will make the paragraph coherent, yeah, and also cohesive because uh, there is a repetition, yeah, of the phrase of black holes. Yeah, yeah. can we move? You can uh, try to uh, explore this. Yeah, I have uploaded this slide in the ALOC, yeah, in the ALOC platform. Yeah. Okay. Common techniques 
other than repetition synonymy antonymy use transition yeah uh, like uh, some conjunction or conjunctive adverb to link the sentence with particular logical relationships you know for example that is that is to say in other words yet however yeah however is uh, our <laughs> uh, weapon yeah in our scientific article however in the introduction yeah, it's pretty much uh, many used in the uh, sentence okay furthermore moreover in addition besides uh, the same way similarly therefore so consequently and many others yeah you can use this to make your paragraph more flow yeah more cohesive we have another example yeah too many foreigners the american word family is confusing foreigners often hear an american say my family is coming to visit in the sentence family means grandparents and perhaps other relatives however at other times the same american might say i'm going to stay home with my family this weekend in this case he's talking about his wife and children yeah you can feel that how if you delete or erase yeah the words in the green color yeah it will be less cohesive yeah it will be um, uh, not fluid like like water yeah something miss if we erase or delete the word in the green color yeah you just try at home yeah example number two i think it's same yeah okay sample number three okay you can uh look after this after this uh, lecture okay okay exercise i also upload an assignment in alloc you can uh, check writing tips yeah general use simple language yeah i have uh, then a workshop about uh, academic uh, writing from nature academies and uh, they always say that you have to use simple language use simple language don't use a, a long and branched language just use simple language simple clear yeah what do you call uh, I know just forget it <laughs> and then write well structure paragraph with a topic sentence supporting details and concluding sentence yeah prefer active voice to passive voice yeah even if you wrote your scientific article active voice is much uh, better than passive voice because in passive voice we will uh, difficult we will have a uh, several difficulties like uh, the subject yeah, that uh, we cannot directly uh, mention yeah the standards become longer yeah and then not symbol again okay and then avoid slang language yeah except if you wrote or you write for yourself or your friend yeah but in a scientific language or scientific writing use 
a formal language yeah. and then good writers usually use plain English words yeah. for example if you want to uh, explain about the graph your graph your your uh, result from your research yeah. and you can say blah 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 blah, blah in plain words yeah. okay but don't use your emotional words yeah in the explanation okay concentrate on one one point per paragraph summarize this point in the first sentence yeah, the main paragraph the topic sentence yeah. all sentences that follows for the main point or limit its scope okay clear the last sentence is a summary of the main point of the paragraph and is used as a transition to the next paragraph okay if we have many paragraphs then this last sentence can be used as connection you know, from previous paragraph to the next paragraph how to structure your text you can uh, choose one yeah from general to specific yeah, deductive or specific to general inductive or from unknown uh, known to unknown or familiar to unfamiliar yeah from least important to most important or chronology yeah you can use this according to the purpose of your article okay okay uh, I think there is no time to do this exercise because we have passed the duration so we can inshallah uh, meet again next week and you can move into a synchronous yeah, activity in ELOC I have upload uh, an assignment for you yeah, just write with yourself and do it uh, with your joy yeah don't be a mess about this yeah just write your uh, writings in a simple way yeah okay thank you very much uh, see you next week assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.